Hey, you guys are out in the churches a lot. This is an open question for whoever wants to jump in. So that means, Greg, you don't answer yet. Okay. Uh, uh, you're out in the churches a lot. What's your assessment of the openness to apologetics now? Is it a whole new day where churches are open, or do you still have to get, get out the can opener and pry, uh, pry it open to see if they'll be interested in apologetics? I think we'd have to make a case still for making a case. And uh, it's often, that I find that situation, I don't know about you guys find it too, I think that there's lots of places we go where we take this for granted. We're Christians the way we're Californians. And if you ask me, what, you're Cal- I'm a Californian. Well, what's the state legislature in California like? I, I don't know. When was the state founded? Well, I, I don't know. How many counties are there? I don't know. But I'm a Californian because I happen to live in California. And I think a lot of us are Christians because we happen to have grown up in the church. And uh, it's, it's time for us to shake the cage a little bit and remind people there's a reason why we believe what we believe. And I think you have to make a case sometimes. I don't know about you, but I've sometimes been asked uh, not to speak at certain places because they aren't quite sure what apologetics is all about. They kind of think there's a book, maybe they want to have me come out, but when they realize I'm going to make a case like this is objectively true, they're kind of hesitant. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, Jim Wallace, uh, by the way. Or Jay Warner. I don't know what to call you anymore. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I lost my name because of Greg. I had a name, Jim Wallace, for many years, for like yes. almost 50 years. And, uh, and then I started doing radio, and uh, Greg says you can't use that name anymore. Well, yeah, you know there's another Jim yeah. Wallace yes. out there who is very, very different in his perspective of Christianity than Stand to Reason. <laughs> and so when, when Jay Warner came on board on the show as Jim Wallace, we got calls in saying, man, you guys are really broad-minded. <laughs> You're gonna have Jim Wallace on the show. So we had to make the distinction and professionally he'd been known as Jay Warner, so we thought we're gonna go that direction. True. true Thank true. you for that sacrifice, true. Jay Warner. That's right, yeah. do what I can. <laughs> Your assessment of the openness of churches towards apologetics, guys? Yeah, I think it's, um, uh, I think it's a mixed bag, but there, there are definitely signs of hope. And I think you know, sometimes we're in these circles with people who are already on board. And we get, of course, a lot of the churches we get invited to are places where we've got standard reason people there or people who are on board with apologetics. And so it can kind of, I think, maybe tilt our, our view a little bit, skew our view that, wow, a lot of, a lot of people yeah, out there right, right. think the way we think. But then you, you, go, you, know, you go where there's maybe one person who's somehow, you know, wrestled you in there uh, despite the protests of their elders or their pastors. And, and then you see that, yeah, you've, you've got to really make a case for this. And you realize what, what's at stake. I mean, here's maybe the first introduction to a church of apologetics. I'm not, I, it doesn't surprise me now uh, how many churches out there, how many Christians out there know nothing of this. And so I think we, we sometimes take it for granted. So I think we still have to make the case. Brett Kunkel. Alan, you had something. Yeah. Um, I, I, think it, I think Brett's right. It is a mixed bag. I think we see it on both ends where, yeah, we do have to make a case that uh, there is a need for apologetics. But at the same time, I feel like um, over the last few years, kind of our, our, the desire for us, to, or the draw for us to be pulled out into churches and around the country to speak on these issues has increased, making me think that there is an increased need. But the other thing I think about is oftentimes the way we make the case is to show them that there's a need, that they have a need for apologetics. And you know, this is one thing that Brett does with his atheist role play. I've done with my Muslim role play and um, the pro-life role play. By the way, it's very convincing, you, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I grew a beard not to look like a Muslim, but to avoid the appearance of Mr. Bean. So that's kind of... <laughs> yeah. I, I do the Mormon role play very effectively. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> For a minute, you had me fooled, actually. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, you know, oftentimes when we do these role plays that, you know, that Sean talked about as well, people realize, wait a minute, I don't have a way to respond to what you're saying. I mean, you're a Christian, and you're actually, you know, pretending to be a Muslim or pretending to be an atheist, and yet we don't even know how to respond to this. And so seeing that in themselves, they realize, man, we, we have a need for what you're trying to offer, and that is, of course, apologetic. So I would say, yeah, we got to make a case. And one of the best ways we can do that is to show them through these kinds of interactions that, you know what, maybe they're not, the, they're not completely prepared for what to expect when they get out there. So mm-hmm. um, that's, that's kind of one of the ways we do it. <clears throat> yeah, when, when you asked that question, I thought, listen, every church I go to is thrilled about apologetics, but that's why they asked me <laughs> to right, go to right. that church. So, um, 
I'm looking at the, the long view, and Craig, you remember like in the late 80s when uh, I was a student there at Simon Greenleaf and you were running that program. That was an itty bitty program, yeah. you know, and when we started doing events at Stand to Reason a few years later, um, we get people coming out, but, um, you know, it, it just, it, it was exciting to see the response, but something has really taken place over the last, I'd say, 15 years. We were, we were thrilled to be part of, I think, a groundswell of in interest in thoughtful Christianity that, that the Holy Spirit began producing way back then. And see, then Craig left the Greenleaf, and, and now we have Biola's massive program. It's wildly successful, and programs uh, popping up around the country like this. And not only that, I mean, every single, well, it used to be the fall, but now it's throughout the year. There are apologetics conferences going on everywhere. Six yeah. weeks ago, we were up in the, north of San Francisco, uh, north of Sacramento, 3,000 people showed up for the conference there at, uh, at this church. And we see this all over. So um, even though there's a tremendous need, as the, as the, the fellows have been mentioning, and I, and I do see that, the need is incredible. I'm looking at where we've come from. And there's been a massive movement of the Holy Spirit. And we are thrilled at Stand to Reason to have been one player in that movement. And you are all part of that as well. And, and to see what God is producing, not just in more and more, in a sense, professionals that are coming on board. Uh, Mary Jo, for example, sharing uh, her, her journey. Uh, Sean's been around for a while, and many others that you see popping up and making their contribution. I'm really thrilled about what I call the third column, and tomorrow I'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that. But in general, I mean the rank and file, the foot soldiers, people just like most of you in the audience who will never have your name on a book and you'll never have your, your name on a marquee of an apologetics conference, but you're out there laying it down day after day in the local church, in the local community, at the university, making a difference where your boots hit the ground, and that is the future of apologetics. To see that happening, mm -hmm. fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous.